Okay. Our mission, Helping Parents Heal is a nonprofit organization dedicated to assisting bereaved parents to become shining light parents by providing support and resources to aid in the healing process. We go a step beyond other groups by allowing the open discussion of spiritual experiences and evidence for the afterlife in a non-dogmatic way. Affiliate groups welcome everyone, regardless of religious or non-religious background, and allow for open dialogue. Attendance today at this meeting is voluntary, and we are here for the benefit of learning from and sharing with other parents whose child has passed away. It is understood that our discussions are intended to be confidential and not designed to replace traditional therapy or spiritual counseling. However, these Zoom meetings are helpful to parents all around the world, and they are posted on YouTube so that affiliate members who are not able to attend live can also watch. Helping Parents Heal offers a wide variety of speakers to allow parents to be informed about many possible ways to heal, to connect with their children, and to learn about the afterlife. The views expressed by our guests do not necessarily reflect those of Helping Parents Heal, and we ask that you take from their presentations whatever may benefit you personally. Welcome, everyone, and welcome, Craig. Thank you so much for being here. Yes, thank you, Craig. I'm so thrilled that he's here. And I also just want to recognize the fact that there are a lot of people who are affiliate leaders, a, a lot of people who were in these documentaries, people who were also part of our um, little trailer that we did for Helping Parents Heal with the yeah, help yeah. of Craig McMahon as well. And I just want to say before we get started, that the first time that I met Craig, we were at the AI, uh, the Afterlife Research and Education Institute conference, and Craig was thinking about making a documentary, and um, we were connected through Deborah Martin, and um, we sat down and talked, and I was thinking, wow, this is so ambitious of this really sweet man, but lots of people have wanted to do documentaries about the afterlife and about helping parents heal. We'd had lots of people film us before and nothing had ever happened. Craig told me that this was going to happen and within months it started happening. And he actually did create, create the documentary which was the first one in the series of documentaries, Life to Afterlife. And it was, Actually, I, I would say that that's one of the ways that most of the parents now are able to find us and we never do any kind of advertising. So we feel so grateful to Craig to have created that do documentary to let everyone know about our journeys and about how we personally are healing. And um, I also just wanna say that he lives here in the Valley in Arizona. So I feel very grateful that he's here and very close to us. But um, before we get started, I wanted to just read um, his bio so that you guys know just a little bit more about him. Um, it's very short. He's an internationally acclaimed afterlife researcher, TV host, and producer. His life changed course when his brother died at a very young age from a car accident at the age of 18. Later, another brother took his life. Craig turned his life into a pursuit of spiritual growth and into how to gain insights from spirit to lift others up. Now Craig McMahon has woven his life's work into helping others to unlock their, the mysteries of life and unleash their true potential to ascension. His goal is to empower others to speak with loved ones and spirit and go within for answers. He guides others to tap into their dormant ability to listen to spirit for guidance in signs, thought, voice, and knowing. Craig captivates viewers with his discussions of near-death experiences, the afterlife, life reviews, pre-life planning, connecting with spirit, and all things unexplained. Your true power lies in believing in the power of your own intuition to guide you. So, I'm going to maybe just pass it over very quickly to Craig and then start asking questions. Could you just tell us a little bit, first of all, Craig, 
about the inspiration of changing from the way that you were doing your movies before this. You were doing horror movies, you were doing very Christian uh, religious movies to doing all of these incredible movies about the afterlife. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, um, I made a couple of uh, movies uh, with uh, no stars in them and I struggled to get distribution and I didn't really have any money to get a name because that's what my agent said I needed to do was to put a name in there. So I said, well, I can't do that. So he suggested horror, you know, scary movies and I really didn't even know what they were. And so he gave me a prescription to watch several movies and he said, can you make this? And I got on Lionsgate and then it just started to take off. I always had an idea that I was gonna get out of it because I didn't really like it that much. And then I switched into Christian movies because um, again, they, um, well, you know, they're not really sermons. They're just basically faith-based uh, uh, movies. They don't really use a lot of the language. It's not a sermon, you know, kind of thing. And then um, I was really loving life. Things were awesome. I loved what I did. And then I think it was about four years ago, um, my spirit team started to make themselves known to me. And to circle back to in time, when I was about 20, I was meditating quite a bit and I was leaving my body and I was only 20. And um, this was in Los Angeles. And I just uh, got this profound message that you have a life to live and that you're, you're, you're trying to research the afterlife back at 20 years old. What are you doing? Go live your life, knock it off. And I was like, okay, it was really strange. So I stopped meditating. I just stopped everything and just got married, got a child um, and then started getting into the movie business. And so, like I said, four years ago, the spirit team made themselves known to me and they said, you're going to be making spiritual content. And I said, no, I'm not. And they said, yeah, you are. And so um, with motion pictures, you know, there's a screenplay and we pretty much just follow like the blueprint of a building. Um, so I wanted to make sure this was really important to me was that it was all truth. I didn't want to waste my time with um, anecdotal stuff, you know, or actually false stuff. So I wanted to really honor the audience and make sure that they get vetted stuff you know and um sure enough i could be interviewing somebody and i know it's um bullshit and i i actually just was like this is not truth i could tell and then i would go back into the editing room and the camera would have went out of focus so i realized the power of spirit and they really they they put me in into this position where i would take people's stories and display it on a large large scale because amazon has really got a lot of viewers you know and so um i really liked amazon but i could never get all the territories because they only had a distribution deal with the united states and uh, canada was actually excluded so i uh, just got this uh download that said go to youtube now <laughs> And, and do both and so I was like YouTube what how does how does that what the heck is that you know so because I'm like in the motion picture thing and uh, I have a funny joke my daughter she's you know she's a doctor and she said uh, so my dad's a YouTuber now <laughs> so um, you know uh, it, it can make uh, a living you know but I was able to get into all these other countries and that was really what was kind of becoming important to me um, so I'm all over the, 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 you know, the world. So um, now all the content goes through Amazon, then eventually goes to, sorry about the noise, somebody's backing up my street. Um, so yeah, that's, that's in a nutshell. So I work for God. I know that sounds really trope and strange, but uh, they bring people to me. They say, do this one, do that one. And there's been times where I wanted to deviate and do a different one. And they're like, just let him do his thing. He doesn't know yet what he's supposed to. And I, st I just started taking my, like, uh, you know, the self-driving cars that we have test testing in the uh, Arizona area, you know, um, they just take their hands off the wheel and I might be repeating myself. The story seems redundant. Um, but anyway, so I just decided, uh, you guys tell me what to do. You guys tell me who, and they just show up, you know, and I interview them. And I've been, I've been working a lot on the, uh, 
the people that have died and came back because I think their experiences are really, really wonderful because you get to see what they saw. They left their body. Where did they go? And it really wasn't quite like the Raymond Moody stuff. It was all over and they were very custom and they all had their own message and they all had their own meanings. And I, uh, it just, you know, you, you interview these people and before you know it, you're friends with them and we're talking like with Ingrid, you know, we just, we continue to talk. Um, and there's just so many wonderful things and, and I'm really looking forward to uh, going back to Source. It's, it's beautiful and um, I uh, look forward to it. That's a beautiful answer. And I, I just want to let everyone know that he's speaking of Ingrid Honkala, who is a near-death experiencer. And um, she's, she's amazing. She has spoken to our group several times and once in Spanish because she, uh, her book, which is A Brightly Guided Life, um, she's originally from Colombia and it's been translated into, or it's been uh, released in Spanish as well as in English. But um, let, me, let me get to some of the questions that we have. We have lots of questions. Uh, the first one is from Marie and she is in um, Australia and she's one of our affiliate leaders. And she says, hi, Elizabeth, I love Craig's series and his Spirit Box series too. My question is, what is Craig's most surprising and informative answer that he has received via his EVP work? Does he believe EBP will improve to the point where we will be able to have a conversation call one day with the other side? Could you maybe speak to that, Craig? Um, what was the most profound? Um, I'd, I'd have to say the conversation with Jesus was pretty wild. Um, I was actually a little bit apprehensive to talk to him because I was kind of a jackass growing up, you know? And so um, I was really working with Archangel Michael to help with um, the negative spirits. And um, he became like this cool bouncer. And I said, I wanted to have a chat with him. And he said, the questions you have, you need to speak with Jesus. And I was like, oh, okay, I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> so he said, it's already been set up. And uh, so he, uh, he talked about karma you know, I don't know if he meant me, but the karma thing is pretty well done for, for a lot of folks. Um, and I thought that was really interesting. We're just clearing up some, some things. Um, but um, I just was kind of, I mean, Buddha was awesome. He's, he's, a, he's just so adorable. And um, Jesus is like a surfer dude. He's so cool so laid back i was really i did not expect him to be like that so i guess out of that it would be just to my expectations of what you think jesus is like he was just very fatherly but yet um i think he related to me in my own humor and in my own language and everything like that so i think he does that with everyone whether you're in india or what I, not even india they wouldn't even probably talk to him they would probably want to talk to buddha um but so um what was the other part of the question the well i was just wondering uh what the most important thing that you have learned obviously through maria's question but also uh if you think that evp is going to allow us to have real conversations with our loved ones sometime soon this is maria's well question. yeah i mean when when my spirit team started me in life to afterlife spirituality series i was you know doing that and then they said you're going to start to talk to um interview people and it was actually their ideas to do the celebrity thing because i was like this is really weird why wouldn't we do like i don't know people that are you know more more spiritually important and they said well you're building an audience and um you're building a genre and so i um that's what my job is to do and I'm making a pretty safe environment and it's interesting because it seems like uh you know the gay movement back in the 80s everybody you know they were coming out of the closet and it was just fabulous and so now it's kind of like the same thing there's all these people saying um I had this experience I saw my sister I had this I had that they're all and I create you know this in YouTube this environment where people are safe you know and so it's my channel uh, life to afterlife uh, spirituality series 
Um, do I think it's going to be a thing of the future? Yeah, it already is um, because of the development with uh, EDP is one thing. Um, and, you know, this, ha this started around 1901 with Nikola Tesla, and he, um, he actually got disembodied voices. He was communicating with the dead, you know, using crystals, and, you know, he's a brilliant guy. So um, he freaked him out, and it's in his journals. He heard disembodied voices. He knew they were some kind of spirit or ghost, but he, he just, he was afraid of what it would do. He, th he felt, you know, it was a different era in 1901. So then as time went on, it became ITC, Instrumental Trans Communication, which is using EVP, but also with some type of, uh, some type of device. So um, Charlie Chaplin actually became very vocal to me. He introduced himself to me. I don't know anything. I didn't really know anything about Charlie Chaplin. I really barely watched one of his movies. But um, he kind of headed the, the, the communication with me because we have a lot in common. He, he wrote, direct, produced, acted in all his content. And now I'm starting to negligent. I mean, I'm, I don't want to get in front of the camera, but they've kind of told me I need to do that to have some kind of vocal point. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, so do I think it's going to be a thing? I, yeah, I, I, I do. Um, it, um, I get, um, you know, I get voices and it's audible so people can hear it and there's captions and everything, but they're communicating with me through um, downloads, like they're telling me things. So when I'm hearing it come out of the speaker, I, it's garbled. It's only when it goes into the recording device the second time around that it becomes a free wave, which to, to not bore you guys, it's just a series of one and zeros and spirit actually manipulates that free wave before it gets recorded. So I actually don't really hear the conversation when I'm doing it. It's only when I go to review that I hear all the magic happen. So that's, that's wonderful. Could you, could you just tell us just a little bit more about your caveat in terms of using EVP? Um, I love the fact that you say that using a EVP when you're starting out on this journey is kind of like driving a Ferrari when you are five years old. Could you maybe tell a little bit more about that? Well, yeah. Um, so they, my spirit team, you know, approached me and told me I was going to be doing this. And I was, I really had nowhere to go. So I went to the paranormal community and they were just dealing with negative malevolent spirits and i was like i'm not interested in this i don't even deal with spiritual warfare i'm not i don't want to do this and so they said um we're going to put you through a spiritual boot camp and um it was really a lot first and foremost was fear um they wanted me to remove all fear and they really helped them making me feel comfortable that when i transition um i really have nothing to fear so what's what's to worry about? I'm just going to go back to source. So that really helped. Um, compassion and empathy was really important. I had to kind of get to know these people um, like Marilyn Monroe or something like that. I had to kind of get to know her a little bit. And um, so what was I going to say? Um, I'm sorry. So talking about EVP and being able to uh, do EVP, practice EVP um, as a new parent, for instance, a new parent on this journey. Um, what would you say to people in terms of preparing yourself to be able to communicate with our kids? Um, you know, I'm trying to work all that out so it's practical for everybody. And right now I've been using um, sound banks. So I basically take, you know, um, see i can't get jesus's voice so i use a loner voice someone that's similar to what i imagine him to be um and i put it uh clean it all up and then put it into a sound bank so it's it's played and i actually um ask a question with the sound gate with the gate off and then as soon as i finish ask, asking the question i open it up the gate for three seconds and allow spirit to um manipulate the audio and communicate with me so I'm trying to uh, work out a way where people can do this because um, there's so many things you can use water, sound, you know, the faucet, white noise, but really it's difficult because the white noise is like, 
you can barely, you know, understand it. So I had to really do some more, more research on phonetics of, of how giving a loner voice or giving a sound bank really kind of, it's giving them their voice box back. So that's kind of what I um, am working towards doing and somehow figure out a way to get these units out to people so they can do it um, on their own. But it, it like you said, the, the Ferrari five-year-old, thing it's um you kind of need to do your you need to do a little bit of work which means like uh frank sinatra really nailed me on integrity and honesty and i wasn't really honest with him i didn't really care about his music as much as you know people do so he kind of nailed me on that freddie mercury said i still had some gay bugs in me like i'm like i don't even know what the heck that's about so i have to really clean up my act and so with um you know, you can't pass judgment about what Michael Jackson did because it, you lose that connection. They don't want to talk to you if you're going to bring up, you know, some of these uh, controversial headlines, you know, so you really have to um, actually love these people. It's really easy to love Robin Williams. It's really easy to love Marilyn Monroe. You know, it's really easy, but, um, and, you know, they're just, uh, but uh, Einstein was trying to get me to, to he was trying to teach me how to, uh, connect to the collective intelligence. And so that was really kind of cool that any answer you have, you can kind of gain from tapping into source. But from what I gather, you know, what I got from all the spirit that I talked to, the one who, I always ask them like, what's, what's something you wished you did more of? And they all say, wished I would have lifted up people more. And that was like, you know, it just really makes you think about how we are you know, towards each other. Can we, can we do that? Can we lift people up? Can we lift, you know, and like Jesus told me, he said, um, I said, how do I deal with my enemies? And he said, with your mouth and serve your enemies. And, and then he told me, he said, Craig, try mixing in some humor. And I was like, oh, wow. I can't even imagine some enemies getting me pissed off and I'm going to start thinking about humor, but he's a master wordsmith, you know? So they all have amazing um, things to see. I do do spirit boxes custom for people um, through uh, my website at craigmcmahon.com where you pay, I think it's for 25 and, and I spend about three days. The, the, the sitter comes up with about 35 questions and then um, odds are they're not going to have their their loved one's voice. So I create a loner voice. You know, I, I give a, I get a sound bite from them and then, um, you know, I give them a, a, not a video version, but an audio version that you watch a video of the captions to see what it is the spirits are saying, because if I've done, I've gone through editing sometimes and I'm like, they're not saying anything. And then all of a sudden they say one word and then there's this frequency that you just kind of tune into. And all of a sudden you hear it all. It's the strangest, it's just like turning a switch. Like I remember with Nikola Tesla, I was doing a session with him. And I'm like, he's not even answering me. This is a, what's going on? Is, is it me? You know, cause if I'm in a bad mood, if I'm having a funk, I can't do it. And they really utilized my battery to bridge this connection. And so my team saw that I was, it was trashing me. I was having major headaches, almost migraines. I was like wiped out for the day. And I said, you guys, this is killing me. I can't do this battery thing. So they've been working on their end um, and it's really come together. The team on the other side is a group of experts, you know, um, that um, created a room, a space and the room has a door and only one person is allowed in at a time and uh, that became the, the, the biggest obstacle was at uh, first when I did it, like I did some stuff with Jamie and Jan, uh, Maggie Clark, um, we were doing some stuff and there was like nine entities talking to me at once and it was just so confusing and they were all calling my name and it's just, it's weird. So I said, all right, well, I, want, I only want one person at a time because this is, this is not like a phone call. It's really, um, you know, it's come a long way. But um, there is two parents on the YouTube channel, Lori Savoy talked with Garrett and then Charlotte with David. And um, so they've been um, really, they're, they're awesome sessions. You guys should watch either the uh, mom talks to son, which is Lori, you guys know Lori Savoy. And then um, 
mom talks to son number two, I think it's called. And it's, it's, uh, it's really beautiful because David actually talked about pre lives that the mother and him had together. And they were actually brothers in arms back in the glad, you know, uh, old uh, armor days and 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 so that was really kind of neat for the mom to see that they were brothers in another life and he just he just started telling us all all kinds of stuff um, but one thing I do notice is whenever I start to dabble around how you dive all that stuff they just really don't even care they're just like yeah I mean um, John Lennon said you know when you were shot cold blank what what happened? He goes, I was over in New York. It was like Disneyland. You know, it's like he was having a blast. And I'm like, but you died. You know, it's, they just don't look at it. They don't want it like Garrett, Lori Savoy's um, son. He said, mom, you've gone over it. What was it? 300 times, Elizabeth? I can't remember. And he said, that's it. You got 300, no more. That's not what you should remember me by. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, it's come a long way. I, I really love this uh, ITC, um, but a lot of people are using it for dark stuff and I get it, you know. That's beautiful. And I think it's wonderful that you only let one person in so that you don't have a whole bunch of people talking to you. And I also just wanna say that Jamie Clark is going to be speaking to us in uh, I think a month. Um, he's one of the people who was at our first conference. Um, and then you also referenced Lori Savoy and she is one of our board members and her son transitioned by suicide. Uh, Garrett did, and um, she did a session with you. She's also been on a few of your mo movies. Um, I have so many questions, so we're going to try to get to as many as we can. So should I um, shorten things up? <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. I just okay. want to try to get to as many people as I can. But Yvette is saying, are the humans of the world opening more to the true understanding of the veil we live, uh, that we experience? And if so, does understanding source dimin uh, diminish the lessons or the purpose of the time that we spend here as humans? Uh, what have you learned from these different sessions that you've done to let us know about that? You know, that, that is a really very, that's a very good question because I had also asked myself if we're able to learn about and have this open communi communication, it kind of gets us in on the on the, it's like, um, I, I kind of looked at it like this, you know, you go to school and you flip back to the back of the book to see the answers to it. It's like, are we, there's a, there gotta be a reason for the veil. There's gotta be a reason for that amnesia, you know? And so um, I was reminded that this particular time in earth is a period where the veil has really gotten a lot thinner and people are coming into these abilities and that's why I'm finding like a movement with spirituality. People are literally just coming out of the closet and just saying, I've never talked, you know, I get emails, very private stuff. And so people are, um, you know, like I'm their friend uh, kind of thing. So they really just pour their heart out. And it's just, I've learned so much, you know, I'm sure like you guys have just talking to each other. So um, is the veil getting thinner? Yes. Is it a good thing? They seem to tell me that it's perfectly fine um, because we're ascending into a different frequency and um, there's a little more openness and it's not such a, a wall like it used to be. There's more and more people um, taking advantage of the thinning of the veil. I mean, you know, Elizabeth, a lot of the parents are seeing things and hearing things and um you know synchronicities and you just like the most important thing i think is just believe and so you know i told you guys that um when i do the spirit box stuff i can't really hear what's coming out of the speaker so that's maddening you know you're asking questions you're getting you're getting the answers in your head but you, you i don't really audio i don't hear the words so they just told me, Craig, just keep asking, move forward, assume, and then assume they're actually answering and you're getting, you know, uh, you, the questions are being conveyed. And I was like, I feel like I'm cutting the grass in the dark. It's so bizarre. But once I learned that if you just believe 
okay and you just um you know when you're talking to your loved ones they hear you but it's kind of strange because you don't think they hear you so you have to assume and believe that they can hear you and they do and um you know a lot goes into it you know beyond the belief which is you know where you're at with the grief and where you're at with the uh the darkness that tends to muddy things up for them they're trying to talk but the frequency is really kind of low for them you know kind of thing so it's difficult for them to uh communicate if you can and, and it's really difficult because you've just lost your child and how in the world are you supposed to get into a, a, a great place it's just but it does help and it takes time and you guys are wonderful for uh, encouraging um each other and you guys are like i i think it's just you guys are writing a lot of the manual for um how to because there's such a connection with your children that is you know nothing i mean it's not like losing a parent it just seems natural but out of out of sequence like that it's just there's this need to communicate you know the child wants to make sure the parents are good you know and so um it really you guys are getting a lot of uh you're, you're really writing a lot of the manual on how to do this for everybody else especially in this new era of our frequency uh going up you know our frequency that's beautiful i i have a question and i love this question obviously they're helping us so much from the other side how can we help them what is it that we can do craig to help all of these kids and our loved ones on the other side what can we do to do what like what do you mean to help them to advance to um to, to help the parents advance or help the no kids to help all of our loved ones on the other side who have already oh i got a group i've got a really neat story i'll try to just button it up really quick i don't know if you're familiar with the with the band nirvana there was a front singer called his name was uh, kurt cobain and Kurt was very, very depressed. I mean, he had heroin problems. He was, uh, he had scoliosis. Uh, he had major migraines. The, the poor guy was just a wreck. And so that became part of the tabloids. And before you knew it, everybody looked at him as, oh, poor Kurt, I feel sorry for him. Gosh, that's just terrible. And he, he told me, he said, it's killing me up there. They're just sending all this negative energy toward me. And I was like, it really affects you. And so he's like, yeah, can you tell the people, my fans, to think of me as a guy that inspired to people to make music or he brought grunge, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with this genre, but he, he inspired a lot of people in Seattle and, and you know, and to, uh, he's just a, a passion, inspirational thing. But he said he's dealing with a lot of people just kind of looking down on him and suicide and you know and all that stuff and so he's like he just wishes people would think of him in a in a in an uplifting uh way because that energy affects them and so i took away from that is your loved ones just think of all the beautiful things and it really lifts them up and it's 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 what they do over there they just lift each other up all the time it's like serve to other you know, service to others and and so um i don't know if i answered your question that's beautiful and i think that what you mean is not that um there anybody's talking badly about kurt cobain but i think that people are feeling sorry for kurt cobain that's it, that's it. and, 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 he's and there's no reason uh, to feel sorry for all of these kids either because they are happy healthy and home and we're the ones who are in school and who are right. going through a very hard time trying to uh figure out what we're doing here and so that's beautiful because yes, there's no reason that we should be uh, feeling sad for any of them. We should be happy. And um, I think that they appreciate that when we are. But um, I also have a question from a parent asking about guilt that we feel. Um, what do all of these, these loved ones uh, say about the guilt that we're feeling um about the passing the way they passed about something that we did before they passed about something that went on during their lives how is it that we should be reacting to be able to help them 
Well, I mean, I, I pretty much get the general consensus from the spirit saying, knock it off. Don't stop the guilt thing. Cause they're, like you said, they're in a very wonderful place and we're here and it's, you know, it's hard for us, but, um, they just want us to experience joy. And I know that can be really, you know, um, difficult, but you are surrounded by loved ones and it's difficult because we don't see them, but you know, we're loved. And, um, so I, I, I don't know what else to say, you know, just other than they, you know, the grief is, uh, natural, you know, um, the guilt, uh, you know, I could have done more. Um, they really just frown upon that. You could have done more. No, that was my exit point. I was, you know, scheduled to depart. Um, and that's really, you know, that's new concepts in spirituality to think that our, our time is uh, scheduled. <laughs> you know, that's I know we perfect. have free will and I know that we can rewrite some of our contracts in midstream. Um, but I think uh, they just they just want us to stay on task, stay on point, be happy. Um, and it really just starts bridging the communication once you start to get into that flow. Perfect. So David is just saying, what does Craig think happens after we, she says, die, I say pass. Um, if you could maybe give your best summary of what happens for us to better understand, that would be wonderful. You mean like the first thing that happens right when your your heart stops kind of thing? Yeah, and just what it's like over there, maybe. If you could give an idea from all of the conversations that you had with people over there, um, could you tell us about the transition? Obviously, is it something that's difficult or is it something that's pretty easy? And then also what they're doing over there right now. I've never, I've never really heard um, too many. It was really difficult. Um, it seems like, um, you know, if it's a horrific car accident or something like that, I really, from what I understand, they're kind of taken out before. So they don't have to, what's the point of experiencing that pain? You're going back to source. So there's, they kind of pull you out, you know, of it. So you kind of observe it as it happens. I mean, your body's still functioning, you know, doing its thing, but you're pretty much on the sidelines going, wow, that car is mangled. What's, hmm, is that me? Uh, then, you know, you get, but it seems like there's a, there's a place that we all sort of go to. And I've heard a lot of people call it certain things. In the East, they call it the medic room. Um, here, they call it the white healing room. And it just basically disrobes you from all of your, uh, crap you got you know hanging on you and it just kind of prepares you for that journey on to whatever it is that you uh is, is see as heaven or nirvana or um mecca or whatever it is um so okay good um and, and so what i what i was gonna say was that they uh they just basically visit multi multi-level visiting meaning you could be with mom you can be with your dog you can be with somebody another galaxy away i know that's really hard to believe but they're they're multitasking a lot of, a lot of spirits are actually multi-living um at the same time that was really hard for me to understand but you know the linear time is really kind of strange to them anyway it's all a now moment so you could be living like uh, kurt cobain uh no who was it um I forget who it was. Oh, Nikola Tesla said he's living another life right now. So he's monitoring that life. He was visiting with his mom. He was talking to some spiritual enlightened beings. And then he was talking to me like he could do that. That's how they could multitask, which a lot of, you know, I mean, you might want to attend classes, um, go through the Akashic records and experience things in the real time of what happened and how did that outcome happen? And then you, uh, you know, you, uh, you decide, I want to, I want to learn more. I want to, you know, I think what happens is, and I've had this happen to me where I've had an, a being of light, take me up to a higher frequency, another realm. 
And I was like, oh, I want that. I want to go to that other realm. And they dim down the lights a little bit so you don't get so, it's so bright and so beautiful, so bliss-like. I mean, it's almost, I hate the word, but orgasmically feeling so wonderful that you just want to go to those places. So they say, well, you need to go back to earth and here's a couple little uh, tasks. So, you know, you, uh, as a soul, you break off a piece of you and um, you put in a persona, maybe a personality. Are you going to be near the light, in the light, or completely away from the light? And then you go and you discuss it with other souls and um, kind of say, okay, what's your role? You're going to be my mom. I'm going to have a serious problem and you're going to be my caretaker. So you're going to learn that thing. And then I'm going to be the, the patient kind of thing. And there's just, it all, it's all about what, you know, you come out of it. So I know this is really kind of like bizarre, but um it just, it, it helps us ascend and raise our frequency and, and go up. That's beautiful. Okay. So we have a question here and I, I, maybe you have heard something from the other side about this. Can our children visit us in other forms? I, I want to say that I believe this myself, such as a dragonfly or a colored bird or a breeze. Can they take on other forms? I've sometimes seen a young man that looks just like my son for a fleeting moment, and it brings joy to me. Is there is that possible to happen? Um, absolutely. Um, I know animals are are a lot. They they allow walk-ins a lot easier. Uh, humans kind of get a little weirded out when you say you know I'd like to use your body. You know, it's kind of weird, um, but I do know what it means because Marilyn Monroe, uh, I became her. I was walking through the studio, the, the sound stages in, in Hollywood, and I was back in the 50s and I could feel her body and I was in there and I was like, this is surreal, but it answered every question about Hollywood and how she was treated and how she became, you know, an empowered uh, woman. So um, it's, yeah, I, I, I uh, when I was dealing with Charlie, a little baby black kitten came. And of course he had the little mustache, you know, the, the, the vagrant uh, epic chap, Charlie Chaplin look. And um, I could tell he was like, now I got some eyes to see. So I think that it's possible. Yeah, I think it's, it totally, you know, animals can communicate um, too. You know, like they can kind of uh, trance channel an animal. So, like, um, like with the the balloons. I mean, that's an inanimate object. You know, that story is so beautiful with the balloons. So Garrett was able to inhabit that helium balloon and um, see it from that perspective. Uh, it's just uh, amazing what they can do. They're so yeah. multitasking, you know, omnidirectional, I don't know, dimensional? Dimensional, yes. Well, I just want to say that this is talking about Lori Savoy and her son Garrett uh, right after his service, um, able to manipulate uh, and to send this balloon all over her house. It was kind of hysterical. And uh, I think that Lori talked about this in her video as well. So if you all want to see this, it's on YouTube uh, and it's well, Lori's. It was, it was great to hear, it was great to hear Garrett's point of view where he was navigating and he was like one eyeball that could see 360. And he said it was just, he, it's, it was like a fun thing for him to do. Like it was really, you know, I was a balloon and it was really, she got, you know, Lori got to hear his perspective, you yeah. know, instead of just what she saw. Exactly. That was beautiful as well. So that is on Craig's um, uh, spirit yeah. box. If so mom, talks to, to mom talks to son. You're able to hear both sides of that, which is wonderful. Um, Dixie has a really beautiful question, and I hope this isn't too personal, but um, she's asking if you're comfortable speaking about how losing your two brothers affected the trajectory of your life and of your parents' lives. Could you maybe talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, I could talk about it. Um, 
you know, my uh, mother and father were Catholics. And um, when my brother was killed in the car accident at 18, I mean, he just got married and his wife was pregnant when it actually, you know, happened. They were young. Um, but uh, my father just went 100% atheist. There's nothing wrong with being an atheist. There's a lot, a lot of experiences to learn by not having God on your side or whatever. And then my mom really was just, she opened up a hypnosis institute in Chicago. I mean, this is the seventies. So spirituality wasn't even really, I mean, I don't even think metaphysics was there. It was more of an occult kind of thing. So it put her on a spiritual journey and it allowed my mom and I to just continue dialoguing. I was only 10. So here I am talking at 10 years old about all this, you know, how does it work? What's reincarnation? How does, you know, so it, uh, so my brother's passing really uh, propelled my mom's journey. And then now my journey, you know, and I think suicide is such a strange, strange thing um, with my brother uh, that took his life. It often, you know, there's so many people that just really don't really talk about it, but have thought about it. And it's just, uh, I don't know. So it's really been kind of like the suicide part is really tough for me to wrap my head around it because of the people that were left behind. His two kids, um, his daughter kind of ended up becoming, um, it just messed her up, you know, it really did his daughter, but they were too young to have the father take his life um, over a stupid uh, altercation with the law. You know, I don't want to go to prison. So, boom, there you are, kind of things. So, um, well, I I think that that's a good answer, and I think that um, it really opened you up to a lot of other things that are out there, obviously. And I feel grateful when you are speaking to Helping Parents Heal that you understand and you've walked in our shoes, and your parents have as well. So you understand what this is like. And I'm sure that this led to all of the crea creativity that you have and that your brothers are helping you do this, which is wonderful, as well as your parents now as well. Um, I have a question that is, is something that you might be able to answer. Dilar is asking, why would we incarnate in a disabled body? Could you maybe explain that or talk a little bit about that? Well, I love... Uh a gal, Rebecca Cute Hands. Um, she was 25 years old. She was very successful at 25, very ambitious young girl. She was in construction and she uh, lost her eyesight. And then her one leg was not operating. And then before you know it, she was completely paralyzed. And it wasn't Guillain-Barre syndrome. Uh, this was a death that she was going to. Her body was just decided to kill itself. So she was, she was at the clinic. Cleveland Clinic um, with 12 doctors trying to figure out how to keep this young girl alive, not worried, you know, not even addressing the quadriplegic -y thing, you know, blind. So fast forward, um, she told me that um, people don't really go within, like, you know, when you have all day to focus on your toe and regenerate um, cells and, you know, get your tissue back to to health so she learned how to um heal uh herself i mean she had she this guy showed up this healer i don't know what he was a shaman i don't even know and uh he said i'm gonna get your eyes back and then i'm gonna teach you how to heal yourself and then you're gonna teach you're not no then you're going to heal other people so um this adversity became uh, such a beautiful thing because now she, she heals people, you know, and so, um, I don't know, did that That's answer? Beautiful. You? Yes. And she is a healer herself and Dixie is saying, and I just want to tell you so many people have been thanking you for your answers. Dixie is saying, thank you, Craig, for your vulnerability and willingness to speak of your experience. You are a beautiful human being and you are so, so much peace and kindness 
uh, you bring so much uh, peace and kindness to so many hurting people. Thank you, which is true. I mean, that's that's evident in everything that you do, and we are all so grateful for it. Um, so let me go back because we have. Oh, could you just maybe go back to your brothers a second and let us know um, if you have a close connection with them now? Do you have you been able to connect and speak to them or? Do you feel them when you're doing your work? Yeah, my brother Al that uh, took his life. Um, my dad was really kind of uh, communicating with me more than the others because he had some uh, things he wanted to clear up. And, you know, my mom was a very unconditionally loving person. So she's really just all she says is craig i'm just proud of you that's all she says and um she knows that i know my soul knows that it's just going to be a matter of a split second and i'll be right back to where i was um where i left off kind of thing that's beautiful listen i've had this question twice so i have to ask you although i know the answer and i know that you've already done it um but People are asking if you have any plans for more Life to Afterlife series, and if so, would you consider one on pre-birth experiences or soul plans, which is something that you've already done with Rob Schwartz. Um, so there is a, a beautiful uh, Life to Afterlife that's already available, just want to let you know, uh, with Rob Schwartz. But I would like to know uh, if you have any plans for other episodes of Life to Afterlife. And maybe pre birth or soul plans, if you are thinking about that as well, well. Tragedy by Design was pretty much kind of exploring the whole pre birth plan. And my team wanted me to do it. And I really wasn't even sure I was on board with it. I know I've had conversations with Mark Ireland about it. But then the more I started to understand it, it really kind of helps. It helps answer a lot of questions. And, um, you know, there's free will. And it's like, um, like a flow chart, you know, you have these basic needs that your soul wants to learn and certain things happen in our lives that just really allow us to immerse ourselves into the experience and get hurt by it. You know, I asked Jesus, is there ever earth going to be, you know, is there, I mean, why does earth have to be such a, a place of pain and suffering to learn? And he said, just, you got to understand spirits love that like what you love it like yeah he he said that spirits souls love the idea of coming here because it really speeds up the process of learning so fast you you it hits you like a brick you know and um and i know that's you know preaching to the choir but we really uh it can take four or five hundred years to figure out some little year that we had here on earth we, we get through things really we can get things, you know, learn really fast. We can learn in one year what we could learn in 500 years in the afterlife, you know? I mean, you can only really, until you walk the walk and talk the talk, it, immerse yourself into it and really feel that pain. I mean, I'm going through some stuff right now and it's just like, you know, I'm learning and um, it's, uh, I'm starting to actually say, uh, Oh, that upset me. Um, well, thank you for uh, bringing it to my attention. So now I've got to do some inner work to find out. And that's been my, my trip right now is basically talking to that child, Craig, you know, at an early age, because, you know, somebody, um, you know, does some triggers me. So I'm, I'm, I'm exploring that part of it, you know, the triggers that we get. And it relates to a, pre a previous experience. So I'm kind of going on that. You know, a lot of people like the the death and back stuff. You know, there's three of them um, because it really helps people get a perspective of what life is like on the other side. That's wonderful. And first of all, I want to say that we're all going to sell you, send you some collective healing because Thank we you. need you to be as happy, healthy, and whole as possible to continue doing these amazing documentaries. Um, Joe has asked several questions. One was about karma and your ideas of karma. Um, he's a big fan of yours and he really would like to Hi, know. Joe. 
about your team, who they he's got, are. He's got it. Joe's got his stogie. How many spirits? <laughs> Look at the size of his stogie. I mean, it's like. So what, I'm, what, I'm, what, I'm what, unmuting Joe right now. Joe, you're you. Can you unmute yourself and maybe you can just ask these questions. That uh, we don't have much time, but I'd love hey, for you. Hey, Craig, how are you? And thanks, Elizabeth. You know, you mentioned your team, Craig. I love you. I just think it's so great that. Thank you, Scotty. You know, and you know, you're such a good ambassador in the forefront. It, it, it brings you know. It'll bring guys to this movement, man. And we need more, need more guys healing. You know? um, yeah, you're the bomb. So my question is, you keep mentioning your team. Do you, could you differentiate who the spirits are, how many they are? You know, do they change? Is it a consistent team through your lifetime? Um, you know, let me know. Yeah, well, um, you know, when you think about your spirit guide, you got to take into consideration that they could have lived 400 years. So if you start putting names on it, it gets really kind of, it gets discombobulated real fast. So I learned early on from somebody, uh, let's see, it was probably Susan Wilson that told me, you know, it's very difficult to put a name on your spirit guides. But then, boom, I start doing the spirit box and this, this cat, Sir William Wood, come along and he's like, I'm your guy, Craig. And I was like, so I got John Lennon, hey, so William's here, you know? And um, so that was interesting that he wanted to be named, you know, as this uh, unsung hero kind of thing. Um, but I do have a spirit team strictly for the spirit box. And that's, you know, people like Nikola Tesla, Albert Einstein, I believe, you know, it's hard for me to tell exactly who, um, Archangel Michael, uh, I think Marilyn actually helps, you know, kind of help help the spirit understand how it works because it's a little difficult for them to navigate through it. So they have what I, they tell me there's movies. You can watch previous interviews. <laughs> so they watch how it works. So they learn how to do it. That's and cool. um, it's, there's a learning curve. So spirit guides. Yeah. I think there's one core main, main guy that's with you from the birth into the transition. And then there are other spirit guides that um, come in, but my team, uh, is two there's two teams and there's the one that just focuses on craig and the all that ascension stuff and then there's the one that focuses on the communication of the spirit uh, box stuff so uh i i uh am blessed because i have a fellow friend a friend of mine his wife just died and he's suicidal and he's in north wales and um he just doesn't know how to carry on so um I, uh, I was just talking to him yesterday and he's an alcoholic and, um, he, uh, my, my spirit, uh, Sir William Wood said, I'll go over there, Craig, let me, you know, I said, go over there, check on him. So he goes, Craig, he's not eating. I was like, Al, what, what, what's this, you know? And so I, uh, William just told me, he said, he's trying to kill himself by not eating, you know, and he can't afford, uh, it's just a mess. So, um, so I just send my spirit guides over there and they go, oh, we know the person that can handle that. They're like specialties. You know, there's some medic ones. There's ones that are more maternal helping with, you know, birthing and, you know, uh, depression. They all have their own little like um, expertise, you know. So I just send, uh, I just say, you guys figure it out. <laughs> Take care of them. <laughs> so I don't do, I don't really send healing like I used to. I just more or less send my team to somebody stand up, help this person, you know? So That's great. Well, thank you. Helped you yeah, out, you sure did. You always do. That's beautiful. Thank you so much for answering Joe. And thank you, Joe, for asking that question. Um, Lily, I just want to tell you, you're saying this is my first time here. I don't understand a lot of what's going on, which makes sense if you haven't seen the different documentaries, but I just want to know that my son is safe and happy. I do not feel him with me and I have no signs. It has been a little over a year. I just want to say before I let Craig maybe answer to that, your son is happy, healthy, and whole, and he is friends with all of our kids here, as well as Craig's brothers, as, as well as everyone. So I don't want you to feel sad. Um, and please do check out the Life to Afterlife series. Um, it's beautiful and it will allow you to know a little bit more about this journey. Um, Craig is an incredible person. I am just so grateful for your trajectory over this very short amount of time. Obviously, you've had help. Um, 
I, I just want to quickly say that everyone is saying thank you. Aziza is saying thank you, Craig. Your documentaries really helped me with dealing with the death of my son, Damon. They also helped me find HPH, who I'm finding to be so valuable on this journey. And I know that we are all very grateful for that as well, because I know that a lot of parents have found us through your documentary and through all of the documentaries, but specifically the first one. And um, I, I just, maybe if you could speak to Lily and let her know about her son who passed a year ago, um, what, what your thoughts are, Craig? Um, I mean, there, you know, I mean, I can already feel that there is a little bit of frustration that he can't seem to get through to her. He is saying that he hears her every everything um, is not being missed. Um, it's maddening for her because she can't, you know, just um, don't beat yourself up. It doesn't come quick. It, it's, it, it's a process, you know, and you know, all the, the stages of all this, it's, it's a process. And if you can just assume he hears you and, and believe he hears you, you'll slowly but surely start to see or hear something. I, I see uh, spirits lights there. They come to me in lights and I usually, they're all different colors, you know? I mean, it all comes to us differently. I mean, a lot of people have uh, a smell, um, you know, cigarette, lilac bushes, you know, uh, whatever are um, a knowing. Um, so like what I did was I would ask a question to my spirit team and it would take about two weeks before I got an answer. And I kind of felt like a gut feeling. And then that changed to about a week and then it became more of a knowing. And then it's usually within a couple hours. And now it's getting to the point where I just kind of surrender and just believe. And I pretty much ask a question, quiet my mind, which is really difficult sometimes but um quiet my mind and you just um it it it, it just kind of comes so please be patient um don't be hard on yourself because it's it's not and you're all that stuff that you're saying is being recorded so you get to share it with them like with popcorn you know like a movie so it's actually quite weird that you're not really you're watching you're in a movie <laughs> but you don't know you're being filmed and then you get to watch it later with your child so that's beautiful so it's not lost it's all being recorded and remembered that's beautiful and when we see our kids again it'll be as though not one second has passed and we are not going to have missed one single thing they don't either so Yes, please talk to your kids. Tell them how much you love them. Tell all of your loved ones in spirit how much you love them because they hear us. And Craig is proof of this. So anyway, thank you for being here, Craig. I truly appreciate it. And um, we always ask everyone to unmute themselves and say thank you and goodbye. Um, so if you all would like to unmute, please do so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Gracias. It was awesome to see you.